Well, hey, everybody. Lisa, happy release day. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Shay Tate, and I am on staff here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. And Lisa, we know who you are. I'm not going to make you introduce yourself. But I would just want to say happy release day. Good boundaries and goodbyes. This message that you've been working on for quite some time now is officially here. And I'm so excited. Thank you. I always feel incredibly excited and at the same time, a great desire to go hide somewhere. I'm too. sure. I'm sure. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's a very vulnerable thing to release, you know, a book, especially a book that is, um, that contains so much of my heart and my journey. And, um, and I'm really thankful. I, I usually say this about my messages, but I really, really, really mean it with the good boundaries and goodbyes. I think I, needed this message most of all. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't write good boundaries and goodbyes from my point of strength because I'm just so good at boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote from my point of struggle, but also my point of progress. And I made progress, um, really good progress, spiritually and emotionally and relationally with boundaries. And um, I felt like some of my insights could help others too. Totally. I mean, I know how much this message has helped me. And what you may not know wherever you're tuning in from is that whenever Lisa writes a book, all of us kind of walk through it with her as well, even our staff here at Proverbs 31 Ministries. And that's what we're actually doing right now. We're at a staff gathering and just wanted to spend some time answering some behind the scenes questions. And so maybe if you submitted some questions yesterday on Instagram, one of yours made the cut. So Lisa, let's go ahead and, and dive in. The first question is from a gal that said, I'm a people pleaser and the concept of boundaries has caused me great anxiety. Do you have any steps for growth in this? Okay, well, I'm going to start off with confession time. Hello, my name is Lisa. I also have struggled with people pleasing. So uh, first off, I want to say you're not alone. Here's where I had to get really honest with myself. I think I was struggling with boundaries and people pleasing because... I didn't understand that I wasn't just people pleasing to keep other people happy. I was trying to keep other people happy so they didn't take from me whatever it was that they were giving to me that I feared I wouldn't be okay if they took it away. So because I feared if I drew a boundary that that person, the consequence to me might be that they remove themselves or they remove support or they remove um, their approval or whatever it was, um, I, I at times have decided that the pain of not having the boundary um, was worth dealing with so I didn't have to fear them taking away whatever they were, were giving me. Um, but it also wore me down. It wore me down to a frazzled and sometimes fractured version of myself. So one thing that I had to do to make peace with this was to say to myself, if I draw a healthy boundary with this person and they reject me, then that's the kind of person that will probably eventually reject me anyhow. And if I fear that I won't be okay if they take away their approval or whatever it is that they're giving me, then maybe I've gone beyond just needing that from them or desiring that from them to demanding that from them. And so, in essence, me people-pleasing was actually a form of control. And that wasn't fun for me to admit at all. Um, because I don't really consider myself that controlling of a person until I'm in a situation that I'm talking about now, fearing that they'll remove themselves or remove something that I'm getting from them. But an even deeper spiritual truth for me was I will always desperately want from other people what I fear I will not ultimately get from God. And so one way that I really made progress in this area was to work on living from a place of acceptance. God has already accepted me, so I don't need to walk around begging other people for scraps of acceptance. I'm living from a place of love. I don't need to walk around begging other people to make me feel loved and to make me feel okay in this world. And it's great to have needs 
with other people, but it's not okay to demand that they give you what we really should be getting from God. And um, so it took me on a longer journey than just saying, hey, I struggle with boundaries because I struggle with people pleasing. I think I struggle with boundaries because I struggle with people pleasing because I'm trying to keep other people happy because I fear losing whatever it is that they're getting from me. And ultimately, it was a form of control. And, um, and I think the, on the flip side of this, healthy people respect healthy boundaries. And if I want my life to be full of healthy people, then I can really tell a lot about the state of that relationship. Because if you're in a, a relationship with someone who's healthy and you draw a healthy boundary, they will appreciate the clarity of communication around that. Um, and so I think it's a good way for me to gauge, am I attracting healthy relationships or am I attracting relationships that almost require me to please them so that that I don't have to fear them going away. Yeah, that's so good. I mean, so many things I could tag onto that as someone that would also identify as a people pleaser, but I love how this gal said it causes her great anxiety because I think that's so true. There's so much anxiety with trying to process this whole concept of boundaries, but what I love is that your book makes it so practical. And so one of those things that you've really helped me with is actually in this next question, so I'm excited about it. Okay, so someone asked, how do I put up a boundary or deny access to someone without looking or being unforgiving? Yeah, such a good question. Um, I haven't worried as much about looking unforgiving as I have being unkind or maybe even seeming unchristian. And I think for a long time, I really struggled with boundaries because it felt a little bit cruel. It felt, um, at times to me even, a little unbiblical. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would hear verses in my head constantly like, you're supposed to lay down your life for your friends. Didn't Jesus model this? Didn't he require this? And yes, Jesus did lay down his life, but it was for a high and holy purpose. It wasn't to enable bad behavior to continue. Mm -hmm. And so when we think about, since it was specifically about unforgiveness, when we think about forgiveness, forgiveness is always two parts. It's fact and impact. You can forgive for the fact of what happened, and that can be a moment in time, a decision that you make. But in dealing with the impact that their actions had on you, that may require some boundary considerations. That may mean that you don't stay close enough to that person that if they don't change, they continue to hurt you, harm you, or devastate you in any way. You know, when Jesus said we have to forgive 70 times 7, knowing Jesus' character and watching how Jesus had such a heart for those who were being abused or those who were, are, were having injustice done to them, I don't think that Jesus intends for us to stay right with that person who's harming us or hurting us, and that that's a more biblical way. I think what Jesus was saying is create enough distance where there's safety and stability for you, that if this person does not stop the behavior that's hurting you, that from a distance you can forgive them 70 times 7 without getting destroyed in the process. So I think when we think about is a boundary unforgiving, I think if we've made the choice to forgive for the facts of what happened, it is okay, it is Christian, it is acceptable by God to walk through the healing process of dealing with the impact that their actions had on you and drawing realistic boundaries to follow. Yeah, something I've heard you say before is, boundaries don't take away from us being the best version of ourselves. They actually allow for us to be the best version That's of ourselves. Right. And so I love how you broke that down. That was helpful. Okay. This question says, setting boundaries will probably mean someone will be disappointed in me and my limitations. How can I process this in a healthy way? And this a question actually, in a funny way, made me think of your dog, Givy, and how he might be disappointed with you and some boundaries that you've had to put um, up with him. We've seen some of that on your Instagram that maybe Givy needs some boundaries. So I don't know if you want to answer this about your, your current status with Givy or, or just us uh, in general. But yeah, tell us a little bit about the disappointment part of this. Okay. Well, 
Yes. Sometimes when you draw boundaries, people are going to be disappointed mm -hmm. because this is you establishing. I mean, really, how I want us to think about boundaries is not this big, hard thing that we're adding to a relationship, you know, and, and creating some difficulty in the relationship. What a boundary is is clear communication that allows you to fight for the relationship so that we don't fight so much against each other. So it's really just providing clear communication. That's what a boundary is, lovingly and, you know, not trying to punish another person, manipulate another person, or control another person. Th those things are not examples of healthy boundaries. A healthy boundary is clear communication. So, of course, sometimes boundaries are going to disappoint other people because it means you're going to have to say no when they want you to say yes. But your definition of healthy, and if this relationship is healthy or not healthy, should not rise and fall on keeping this other person happy. Them being happy cannot be your definition of a healthy relationship, right? And of course, we want to be happy in relationships, but we want to be the healthy version of that. And so disappointment is part of the process, but it's to make space for being able to say yes to the best parts of that relationship and to have clear communication about what is and is not acceptable in the relationship. Now let's get to Gibby. I am a boundary failure when it comes to Gibby. I'm just going to admit it, you know? I have such good intentions to draw such good boundaries with Gibby. Gibby's my dog, for those of you who don't know. Um, and, you know, I just love Gibby so much that I violate my own message. I do. I violate my own message with Gibby. Somebody else says I'm not good at boundaries with my dog, and I just want to say me too. Like, I'm right there with you. I'll give you an example. This morning I was eating toast, and... Gibby loves toast. Now, how Gibby knows he loves toast is because he's whimpered for toast before when I was eating toast, and I gave him some. Now he's currently on a toast obsession. That's really what's happening. And so I laid in bed this morning. I'm eating my toast, drinking my coffee. Gibby is begging for the toast, and I know clearly I should not give him the toast. I know clearly I should not. But I'm just tired of hearing him whimper, you know? <laughs> And so I just break off a piece and give it to him, but that wasn't good enough. So I break off another piece and I give it to him, and that wasn't good enough. And then, you know, the toast is done, and he's still whimpering for toast. So I think, you know what, I'm just going to go make him two pieces of his own <laughs> toast, okay? It's book release day. Uh, you know, I'm just... He should be able to celebrate too, right? He should be able to yeah. celebrate too, and I don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to deal with his crying, you know? I totally So get I go it. make him two pieces of his own toast. I toast it perfectly. I butter it and everything. And I mean, I clearly know I'm not supposed to be giving buttered toast to my dog, okay? But he hasn't gotten sick from it. He has a, a really good, strong stomach. <laughs> he's, he's a resilient dog is what he she's is. saying? Yeah. So I'm making these two pieces of toast. I put it on a napkin and I put it on the carpet where he absolutely loves to eat my toast, you know, and then I give him two whole pieces of toast and he goes up and sniffs it and he looks at me and he didn't want it because he only wants the toast that I want. And so I pick up the toast and I pretend like, oh, mm, mm, I love this toast and I pick off a piece and he eats it. So I am a, a boundary failure when it comes I mean, there's so much we could unpack here, but... <laughs> I agree. For the sake of time, I'm going to keep us moving. But I, maybe God gave you Gibby as a humble reminder just to keep making progress in, the, in this area, you know? <laughs> yeah, I agree. And I think my family would love for me to make more progress yes. in the area of Gibby. <laughs> yes. Well, imperfect progress is still progress. So that's, Thank that's you. okay. Um, okay. So this question says, the holidays are around the corner. What do boundaries look like within family dynamics? This well, one's hard. it's challenging because... When you get together at the holidays, there's sort of forced connection that the rest of the year you can navigate with distance. But with the holidays, it's, for me, it's, I simultaneously want to be with my family, but I also have some anxiety that builds up if certain family members that have dynamics about them that cause me anxiety if they're going to be there. So my counselor says we prepare in times of strength for coming times of struggle. Mm -hmm. 
And so today is a great time to read Good Boundaries and Goodbyes and start preparing in this time of strength for the potential struggle that may or may not happen at Thanksgiving or Christmas or during the holidays, whatever holiday you're celebrating. So here's what I would say. Let's say that you know um, Uncle Jason is coming to Thanksgiving and Uncle Jason loves to bring up politically charged topics at the Thanksgiving table. And you already know, or I already know, that I'm going to be a little limited in my emotional capacity to handle that because putting on Thanksgiving is going to be taxing. I'm going to be tired, and when I'm tired, my emotions can sometimes run a little thin. And so it's going to be important for me not to try to control him and not to try to manipulate him because I don't want to put a boundary on him to try to force him to limit his conversation, but I do need to inform him that if he brings up politically charged topics, that I will either turn to the other end of the table and continue conversation on a different subject, or I will remove myself from that situation because I already know I'm going to have limited emotional capacity, and if I get pulled into a conversation when I'm already worn thin, I could potentially have a reaction at the Thanksgiving table that does not represent my true intentions on Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for my people, but if I'm so worn out that I have a little moment where I don't exercise self-control, then it is not going to appear that I'm very thankful for all people, right? (laughs) And it's my responsibility not to control him, but it is my responsibility to know what I need to stay Mm self-controlled so that I can love others without losing the best of who I am. So I can inform him of my decision. I don't have to ask permission. I don't have to say, this is what's going to happen. Okay. You know, I don't have to do that. What I just need to inform him and I can, if I choose to say, this is because I don't have the emotional fortitude to have politically charged conversations around the Thanksgiving table because I already know that it's not going to bring out the best of me, and I want to keep the best of me front and center for this year's Thanksgiving. What I love about what you said about that is it took it it took that question from thinking about like oh, what am I going to do about them and you really answered it to what am I going to do myself like yes. kind of putting us back in the driver's seat to make decisions because sometimes I think when we're talking about boundaries we can feel so powerless to what other people are doing and so I love how you even just gave us like a practical script of how we can have that in our toolbox and walk into a situation just not feeling so caught off guard or ill-equipped so yeah and I think this is one of the big differences between good boundaries and goodbyes and maybe other messages on boundaries, first of all, it's going to give you the biblical confidence to know that boundaries are not just a good idea, they're God's idea. And so I I do a lot of work, theological work throughout the book to give you biblical confidence. Um, But also, it's a paradigm shift, and the paradigm shift really is. Boundaries are not for the purpose of controlling or containing or trying to change another person. That's where I made the mistake with boundaries for so long. I kept putting pressure on other people with my boundary, hoping to get them to change. But if they are unwilling or possibly incapable of the necessary changes, I... I must learn how to put the boundary on myself so that I can end conversations when they need to be ended, lovingly and kindly. I can remove myself from situations that are unsafe or unstable or just not good for the best of me to be front and center in those relationships. And I don't have to feel so stuck, so powerless, so unable to make a situation better. I have to remember, I always, always am responsible to remain self-controlled. It's my responsibility to decide the situations that I give access to or the people that I give access to. And when I say access, I mean access to my limited capacity. I have limited capacity in my finances, in my emotions, in my time. And so it's my responsibility to acknowledge those limitations, not because I'm mean, but because I'm human. Only God has a limitless supply, right? And in essence, I don't ever want to step into that place where I pretend like I'm so limitless that I'm kind of 
potentially a God in their life. And um, I'm not responsible for them. And we never want to be in a situation where we're trying to work harder on someone else than they're willing to work on themselves. So good. Um, okay, so you already talked about Givy, and that, that's kind of in progress. But what's been the hardest boundary for you to set and maintain personally? I think the hardest boundary for me to set and maintain is when people make requests of me. And, you know, I, I always have this thought, like, I can do that. And that's part of what makes me feel guilty for saying no. You know, especially if someone says, can I have five minutes of your time? And I want to give them five minutes of my time, but the reality is if I give them five minutes of my time, then it's going to cost me with whatever I'm now going to run late to, you know? So either I need to build into my schedule blocks of buffer time and then be willing to say yes to whoever asks for five minutes of my time inside one of those buffers so I don't get completely bankrupted in that. Um, but the other thing, too, when somebody says, I want five minutes of time, it's never five minutes. That's the other part of this, you know? So if, if they want 20 minutes, they ask for five minutes, and I only give them five minutes, I'm still going to be a disappointment to them. And so I have learned to properly reflect my heart to say this script. While my heart says yes, 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 the reality of my time makes this a no. I cannot do that, but here's what I can do. And um, that has helped me not feel so um, badly or so uncaring. And, um, but it is an area where I would say personally, I still kind of struggle with that. I love that. Another script that I think I can put into my toolbox. So that's really helpful. Okay, last question. How do you balance the all or nothing mentality with boundaries? Well, boundaries are the very thing that should protect us from extremes. You see, here's where I used to go wrong. I would either, on this end, I would either just ignore the need for a boundary and try to deal with whatever was happening that I knew I shouldn't deal with, but I just didn't want to create unnecessary conflict, and I didn't know how to say it. And so whatever, whatever was on this end, I was just constantly giving in. Or on this end... I would give in so much to where I just couldn't take it anymore, and I would jump to the opposite extreme of just saying no more. But you see, boundaries help us bring that to the middle. Boundaries help us avoid the extremes of all or nothing. Boundaries should help us provide a way to have conversations with clarity and kindness that establish in order for the relationship to continue in a healthy way. This is what I will accept. This is what I will not accept. This is what I do have to give. This is what I do not have to give. This is what is okay and this is not okay. Those kinds of considerations. And I think people, especially healthy people, appreciate the clarity of where is the freedom in this relationship. Because if we don't know where the freedom is, we're always going to tiptoe with this person. Is this okay? Is this not okay? Is this okay? Is this not okay? And so for me, I appreciate when people provide clarity for me so I don't have to guess what they're thinking or feeling. That's so good. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for answering some of these questions. I know I personally have had some resistance to this message and trying to figure out how to walk all of this out. And it's been so helpful just to hear you um, process this over the last couple of years. And now your book is finally here. And I think just even hearing you talk about it more in person makes me so excited. 